Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we are exploring some weird mini PCIe adapters that you probably haven't seen before. For example, want to replace your Wi-Fi card with Ethernet. So first of all, a bit of backstory on mini PCIe. Just like the more modern M.2, mini PCIe gives mobile devices a way to connect accessories like Wi-Fi or Bluetooth cards easily. Mini PCIe like its full-size counterpart, comes in different generations, the newest being 3.0, which supports bi-directional 1 gigabit PCIe lanes. Mini PCIe can also carry USB data, SIM card data and other signals, for example, for status LEDs. As I mentioned, Mini PCIe is mostly used for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, but there are some more niche use cases, as we will see now. Let's start with this. It gives you access to the USB signals that are sent on most mini PCIe ports. So let's see if it works. To test all of the accessories in today's video, I have this old trusty Dell Latitude here with me because it has a neat little trick. It has a door specifically to access its dual mini PCIe ports. One was used for mobile data and the other one was used for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So this makes it easy to swap the cards in and out and I don't have to disassemble and reassemble the whole device all of the time. At least I hope so. Because some of the cards are very long and I'm not sure if they will actually fit here. But we will make it work. Ah! So let's start by installing our USB cards. For example here because it's the longer slot. Okay, port is connected. Let's turn the notebook on and see if it works. I have a Debian Linux installed on here because I thought it would be easiest to install drivers for all of these weird devices on here. Since we don't really have that much room down there, I've connected a USB hub to the USB port and I will try to connect devices here. So let's use this USB stick and see if it works. Ha! <laughs> and it actually does. As you can see, it's just the USB installer I used to install Debian onto this device here. But, as you can see here, no trickery. We are actually using the USB port coming from our mini PCIe slot here. So if your notebook doesn't have enough USB ports or you want to have a permanently attached USB device, like for example the dongle for your wireless peripherals or a small USB drive, this is actually a great idea. So I have this dongle here, I can put it into the USB port here and actually the door would still close and now I would have a way to connect the dongle permanently to my device here. That's actually quite cool. So the next card is also very interesting because it allows you to connect a M.2 Wi-Fi card to a notebook that only has mini PCIe. So you can connect a newer Wi-Fi card to your device using this. So I have this Wi-Fi card here that I stole from another ThinkPad and let's see if it actually works. Okay, so the Wi-Fi card is installed. The only problem that you're probably going to face is newer Wi-Fi cards will have these small connectors for their antennas, whereas the original card will have these big connectors. So I don't know if there are any adapters for this use case, but what I will do, I will just try to use it for now without the antennas, and if I need them, I will just steal the antennas from this adapter board that allows you to connect a MacBook Wi-Fi card to a desktop PC used in Hackintoshes and it has this newer style of uh, antenna connector so I could use this for example. But first let's see if it works uh, without the antennas. Okay, we run into our first problem. The card is too long. As you can see here there is actually a perforated line where you could break this PCB in half so the card would fit here. But what I'm just going to do is uh, use tape to tape it to the chassis. Okay, looks good. Let's see if it works. So now I installed the drivers and initiated a reboot. So let's see if the card works. Okay, there's now the Wi-Fi icon down here. So let's see if Wi-Fi actually works. <laughs> okay, 
I created a hotspot on my phone to test Wi-Fi capabilities out and the phone is right beneath this table and you can see the signal strength here. So I mean that's what we get for not using antennas I guess. <laughs> But it appears to be working. It can at least find um, the network. So if I would put antennas there, it should probably work better. Let's type in my super secure password. Hey, it connected. So Wi-Fi card using this weird adapter thingy here does actually work. And if we would put the card into here, so we have a longer slot and broke this bit off here that we don't need, this would work inside of the laptop and we could actually close it. So using this adapter, you can actually upgrade an old laptop using a very modern network card, which is really cool. So let's see the next adapter. Similarly to the last card, this one is also for networking, but it's not for Wi-Fi. It is for mobile data. So. What you can see here is we have our typical 52 pin edge connector for mini PCIe. Then there's an M.2 connector for a wide area network card, so a mobile data card basically. So what we can do is place a SIM card here and place a wide area network card here. And then let's see if it actually works. So I've got this wide area card here and I've got a spare SIM card here that we of course need to adapt through all of the different phases of SIM card as usual because this is a full size slot. Okay, let's put the card in. As usual, the card didn't fit, so I just used scotch tape. Let's see if it actually works. Here you can actually see that we now have the broadband icon. Let's see what happens if we click on that. No networks available, okay. So sadly, I couldn't get the card working. As you can see here, it does show up in LSUSB. So it is actually using the USB signals of mini PCIe in this case. And um, I also installed drivers and I installed a enable utility that some people apparently need for this card, but I couldn't get it working. I don't know if this card needs any additional hardware to work because I got it from an old uh, ThinkPad that was broken. So maybe it doesn't work using this specific adapter, but in theory, you could use this to give your um, old notebook, for example, 5G capabilities, which is what I try to do here because this is actually a 5G card. Let's try another card. Did you ever need to connect multiple hard drives to a notebook that obviously doesn't have any SATA connectors? Then you can actually use this adapter here and it's basically a SATA card uh, that connects to the mini PCIe port. So let's see if it works. Okay, so the card is in and it kind of looks like we're having open heart surgery here. And I've got these two old hard drives which came out of a PowerMac G5 and an external ATX power supply to power them. So the hard drives are connected and the power supply is plugged in. So let's see if it actually works. Okay, that looks promising. Huh, interestingly, there's only one drive showing up and it's the internal one. So since the SATA adapter didn't work, let's try something even better actually. Here we have an adapter that converts the mini PCIe into M.2 for an SSD. So we have PCI attached storage, which should be way faster than any of these SATA drives here. And to test it, I'm using this 512 gigabyte Samsung M.2 SSD. Okay, it's just a little bit too long, <laughs> but I mean, it still makes contact, so I think it should work. I will stick this down with tape and then let's see if we can actually access the drive. Okay, and here you can actually see the drive. We are connected to this drive here. So this adapter finally worked. I really want to see if we could actually boot from that because right now I have a very slow 5400 RPM hard drive in this notebook. So I will use DD to image the whole boot drive over to the new SSD and see if we can actually boot it. 
Okay, so now the drive has been cloned and we can restart the system to see if we can actually boot from the M.2 SSD. Since this notebook is over 10 years old, the BIOS doesn't actually know what an NVMe drive is. So I can't really boot from it directly. My solution now is to have a group bootloader on the hard drive that we were using beforehand and have a Linux installation on the NVMe drive that we can boot from group, as you can see here. So let's see if it's actually faster than the internal hard drive. And I couldn't even finish my sentence and it's already at the login screen. So let's see how long the login procedure takes because that usually also takes way over a minute. <laughs> okay, there wasn't even a loading time. That's, that's actually crazy how much faster the system is. You can, you can actually even feel it here. When I was scrolling here previously, uh, you couldn't see all of the results because they were still loading. So um, yeah, that's actually really impressive that a weird solution like this one stuck on with tape uh, using two adapters actually works. This might be my favorite adapter from this video so far. So now let's have a look at the next adapter, which is probably actually the most useful one. So what this abomination of an adapter actually does is it takes the one PCIe lane that we get from here, converts it to a very illegal HDMI cable that is plugged into here. And this creates a X16 PCIe slot, just physically, of course, it's still only the one lane that we get here. And on this side, it takes power from a computer power supply, so an ATX power supply. What I want to try in here is this Radeon Pro WX4100. It's a workstation AMD card, basically an RX 550 as far as I know. And the nice thing is that it actually supports four display outputs, as you can see here. So I had this card in a workstation for some time and now I want to see if it's actually compatible with this setup. So for capturing the second monitor, my setup will be the following. I will use one of these HDMI to mini display port adapters, followed by an HDMI cable and a HDMI capture card that I will plug into my notebook that is uh, out of frame here. So let's see if that works. Okay, as you can see and probably also hear, the fan of the graphics card turned on. And actually, wow, it, it, okay, that's crazy. That's freaking crazy. It works out of the box. It just switched over to this graphics card. As you can see here, there is no output on the screen anymore because we're only um, sending video out over this graphics card here. Regular viewers of this channel might actually recognize this graphics dock here or this adapter solution because I already used it in a video where I connected an external GPU to an old Apple TV, which is also uh, worth watching. 15 minutes later. Okay, maybe I spoke too soon. It seems like it doesn't want to boot. So I actually couldn't get the eGPU working under Debian. So what I'm trying to do now is to boot from a CD that has Antix Linux on it, the same distribution that I used in the Apple TV eGPU video. And yeah, let's see if that actually works. It looks promising. Hey, it actually worked. <laughs> Let's have a look in LSPCI. And here we can see the AMD graphics card. <laughs> so it actually worked. And in theory, because we have two slots here, in theory, we could actually have the M.2 SSD and an external graphics card <laughs> all at the same time on this notebook. <laughs> I really love these adapters. Now we come to the last adapter. And this is probably my favorite one, although we had many great adapters in this video, just because of how weird it actually is. So you remove your Wi-Fi card to get a free mini PCIe slot. Okay, uh, we have seen that with all of these. 
And then you plug this adapter in. That actually gives you Ethernet. <laughs> I think this is literally the weirdest adapter ever. Wi-Fi adapter to Ethernet. So let's see if we can actually get that working. I hope it's a plug and play device, but we will see. As usual, it uh, doesn't fit here, so we have to use some more tape. Good old electrical tape I got from China. Let's see if it works. Okay, so we are booted from our M.2 SSD and I have an ethernet cable. Let's plug it in. And as usually, it doesn't work out of the box. So as you can see here, we actually have a network connection. So it worked. It actually worked. <laughs> I don't really know why you would do this on a device that already has an ethernet port, but you could replace your Wi-Fi card and get another ethernet port. <laughs> I find that really funny. That was actually the, uh, the adapter that I bought first and uh, then thought about this video because I thought it was such a weird idea to replace a wireless card and add wired ethernet functionality. Okay, so that's it. We've seen many weird and wonderful adapters in this video that all use the common mini PCIe interface. Most of them at least worked. I still find it extremely sad that we can't use the SATA adapter because I actually wanted to use that in another video as well. So I will probably have to order another one and wait probably close to a month for it to arrive. But the other ones actually worked. And my favorite one is from a practical standpoint, the mini PCIe to M.2 SSD, because this SSD is so much faster than any storage that this device could have used natively. It really just transforms the experience. It's just so much faster uh, using this M.2 SSD. And from a weirdness standpoint, I think the I'm replacing my Wi-Fi card and adding Ethernet to it uh, adapter, it probably takes the cake. <laughs> so write me in the comments, what were your favorite adapters? And have you ever tried any of these? Or maybe do you know even weirder mini PCIe adapters? I really want to know if there's more out there. I couldn't find any, but that doesn't mean that there don't exist more of them. So thanks for watching. If you want to see more shenanigans like this, consider subscribing and I'll see you next time.